Hello, and welcome to Case of the Day. I'm Dr. Crowley, and we're going to discuss a interesting patient from the day and then transpose that over to uh, talking about uh, glaucoma. So we had a lady come in today, unfortunately had not been seen for many years, had never had an eye exam, comes in, she has no real complaints per se, but we measured her eye pressure, and her eye pressure was 26 in both eyes. The normal pressure is 10 to 21, <clears throat> so this increased pressure <clears throat> could be um, a contributing factor as far as her developing glaucoma. It's not the only factor. It turns out glaucoma is a multifactorial disease, probably eye pressure being the most prevalent of the different factors involved. And so when I tell someone they may have glaucoma, and they, the first question is, well, what is glaucoma? So um, we're going to go over that so we can explain to you what glaucoma really is. So first thing you need to know is a little bit about the anatomy. So we're going to go over what the anatomy of the eye is. So in the back behind where your blue part or brown part of the iris behind that is a ciliary body. This part of your eye that you can't see produces the fluid that fills up your eye. It then percolates, comes forward through the pupil and then fills up the front of your eye. This anterior chamber is filled with fluid called the aqueous humor. Then the fluid then drains over to the what this is called the trabecular meshwork. This meshwork goes all the way around your eye, 360 degrees, sort of right where the white part starts. And so this white part uh, is called the sclera. And so right in this area, there's a meshwork. And this looks like cheesecloth. That is, there's little fibers going back and forth and it's like cheesecloth, and the fluid filters through in this through this cheesecloth into Slim's canal, and then eventually into a vein and out of your eye. So there's a constant production of fluid in your eye and a constant outflow of fluid in your eye. There are two basic types of glaucoma, and they're based on anatomy. So an open angle glaucoma, which is what we're going to talk about mostly today is that angle between this cornea, the clear part of your eye, and the blue or brown part, that angle is open, just like in this case. So the fluid has every opportunity to get to the trabecular meshwork and then filter through the eye. Angle closure glaucoma, which only comprises a few percentage uh, of glaucoma cases, open angle is better than 90% of all glaucoma cases. So, in acute angle closure, angle closure glaucoma, this iris comes up this way and across and so it's if the iris butts up against the meshwork that's like putting a stopper in a sink. No fluid can get out of your eye and your pressure goes out the roof and you're now, you, this is the one type of glaucoma that does have symptoms. These people come in, their pupils are dilated, your eyes red, your vision is very poor and they're in severe pain, nausea, throwing up, vomiting, really severe problem, uh, but that's a very uncommon circumstance. For almost all other cases, we're going to talk about open angle glaucoma. Now, why does this have trouble getting out through the fluid, getting out through this meshwork? Well, some of that has to do with genetics, uh, and so there, this meshwork gradually fills up with a material that blocks the flow out of your eye. It could be either pigment from your iris, and that's called pigmentary glaucoma, which is a type of glaucoma, or it could be the meshwork fills up with a different kind of material, and so therefore the, the, there's a slow backup. People with typical open angle glaucoma, their pressure may be in their 20s or 30s, sometimes the 40s, but it's not as elevated, and this is a chronic condition, and what happens, this increased pressure inside your eye then damages the nerve in the back of the eye, which is responsible for taking the vision from your retina back to your brain. So this nerve over time gets damaged. Glaucoma doesn't cause symptoms because it slowly causes damage to that nerve and you lose tiny little pieces of your side vision slowly over months or even maybe years of time and so you don't notice any symptoms. And it's so, it's so slow that almost never does anybody come into my office and say, hey doc, I think I got lost in my side vision, I think I got glaucoma. Doesn't happen. It's so slow, you learn on your own subconsciously to turn your head more because that vision's missing, or your brain learns this, gotta, we gotta move our eye over here more, and you learn to compensate for that. So, once 
we determine that you have glaucoma. In almost all cases, the pressure is elevated that damages the nerve. There's a lesser form of glaucoma called normal pressure or low pressure glaucoma that's a little more complicated that we can discuss at a later date. So once we determine your pressure is too high and it's going to damage your nerve or has damaged your nerve, then we have to decide on treatment. And there's a, two or three different choices of treatment. One, there are different medications that either slow down the production of fluid in your eye or two, help the outflow of fluid through out of your eye. We also have laser treatment where we laser this area where the meshwork is and the laser treatment opens up those channels and lets the fluid drain out further. And if all those, those two things fail, then the last resort is surgery. So we actually make an opening through into the eye to let the fluid drain out of the eye. So there's three ways of treating glaucoma. Typically speaking, it would either be um, medications, eye drops, or laser treatment. Uh, and different doctors decide to do different things as far as what they would recommend first. In my hands, I give people the choice if they come in with a new case of glaucoma. I tell them there's medications we can put in their eye that will then um, bring their pressure down. And we usually set a target pressure depending on how bad the glaucoma is and where the pressure was the first time we check it, we set a target pressure where we think what is going to be a safe level and then go from there. So for instance, if your pressure is 29 and your optic nerve is healthy, my target pressure only may be 19. If you have had severe damage to your optic nerve and, uh, and uh, we're worried about you're going to lose your vision totally, then my target pressure may be 10 or 11. So it varies depending on the severity of your disease. So I usually have people have the choice. We can do the laser treatment. That works very well. Uh, or we can put someone on eye drops, and that works well as well. So that's the general gist of what glaucoma is about and why we get glaucoma and what happens in the eye from glaucoma. If you have any questions about what we've gone over, you can contact me through the website, or uh, you can... Um, Write us an email us or contact us at the website. So that's for today. We're gonna next next time we'll come up with something new that will hopefully inform you and you'll be interested in knowing about. And until then, may God bless you and have great vision and healthy eyes.